Uh, and to, clo to close out to close out this evening's talent show, um, uh, we'll have we'll have a member of, of the collective Gogo community, a longstanding member, uh, an institution in, w in Worcester Television and Worcester Print Media now, uh, and uh, someone I've worked with very closely uh, for several years. Mike Benedetti. Mike Benedetti. Oh, 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 oh. You want some I'm gonna try to project. I'm not projecting, let me know. I thought you were gonna be a mind. He's gonna be reading a poem. <laughs> Ian, Ian suggested there be a ghost story because this is a horror themed poem. Yeah! Story. And before the terrifying sounds of what cheer brigade were tuning up in the next room. Scary band. A ghost story, a ghost poem. Off of a phone? Off of a phone, because okay, I'm cool. tired, I don't remember it all. There are strange things done in the midnight sun by the men who moil for gold. The arctic trails have their secret tales that would make your blood run cold. The northern lights have seen queer sights, but the queerest they ever did see was that night on the marge of Lake LaBarge. I cremated Sam McGee. Ah, now Sam was from Tennessee where the cotton blooms and blows. Why he left his home in the south to roam around the pole, God only knows. He was always cold, but the land of gold seemed to hold him like a spell. Though he'd often say in his homely way that he'd sooner live in hail. On a Christmas day we were mushing our way over the Dawson Trail. Talk of your cold, through the parka's fold it stabbed like a driven nail. If our eyes would close, then the lashes froze, till sometimes we couldn't see. It must, wasn't much fun, but the only one to whimper was Sam McGee. And that very night, there is Ian Anderson. Then that very night as we lay packed tight in our robes beneath the that snow, part of the and the dogs were fed and the stars overhead were dancing heel and toe, he turned to me and, Cap, says he, I'll cash in this trip, I guess. And if I do, I'm asking that you won't refuse my last request. Well, he seemed so low that I couldn't say no. Then he says with a sort of moan, it's the cursed cold and it's got right hold till I'm chilled clean to the bone. Yet taint me in death, it in it's my state? uncle dread of the icy grave that pains. So I want you to swear that foul or fair, you'll cremate my last remains. A pal's last need oh. is a thing to heed, so I swore I would not fail. And we started on at the streak of dawn, but God, he looked ghastly pale. He crouched on the sleigh and he raved all day of his home in Tennessee. And before nightfall, a corpse was all that was left of Sam McGee. There wasn't a breath in that land of death, and I hurried horror-driven, with a corpse half hid that I couldn't rid because of a promise given. It, it was lashed to the sleigh, and it seemed to say, you may tax your bra and brains, but you promise true, and it's up to you to cremate those last remains. Now a promise made is a debt unpaid, and the trail has its own stern code. In the days to come, though my lips were dumb in my heart, how I cursed that load. In the long, long night, by the, by the lone firelight, while the huskies, round in a ring, howled out their woes to the homeless snows, oh God, how I loathed the thing. And every day that quiet clay seemed to grow heavier and heavier grow. And on I went, though the dogs, were spent, and the grub was getting low, and the trail was bad, and I felt half mad, but I swore I would not give in. And I'd often sing to the hateful thing, and it hearkened with a grin. Till I came to the marge of Lake LaBarge, and a derelict there lay. It was jammed in the ice, but I saw in a trice it was called the Alice May, and I looked at it, and I thought of it, and I looked at my frozen chum. Then, here, said I, with a sudden cry, is my crematorium. Some planks I tore from the cabin floor, and I lit the boiler fire. Some coal I found that was lying around, and I heaped the fuel higher. The flames just soared, and the furnace roared. Such a blaze you seldom see. Then I burned a hole in the glowing coal, and I stuffed in Sam McGee. Then I made a hike, for I didn't like to hear him sizzle so. And the heavens scowled, and the huskies howled, and the wind began to blow. It was icy cold, but the hot sweat rolled down my cheeks, and I don't know why. 
and the greasy smoke in a Nikki cloak went streaking down the sky. I do not know how long in the snow I wrestled with that grisly fear, but the stars came out and they danced about ere I ventured near. I was sick with dread, but I bravely said, I'll just take a peep inside. I guess he's cooked, and it's time I looked. Then the door I opened wide. And there sat Sam, looking cool and calm in the heart of the furnace roar. And he wore a smile, you could see a mile. And he said, please close that door. It's fine in here, but I greatly fear you'll let in the cold and storm. Since I left Plum Tree down in Tennessee, it's the first time I've been warm. There are strange things done in the midnight sun by the men who moil for gold. The Arctic trails have their secret tales that would make your blood run cold. The northern lights have seen queer sights, but the queerest they ever did see was that night on the marge of Lake LaBarge. I cremated Sam McGee. Woo!